What is up, Brian here from Ballistic Tech and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my makerspace. So I'm gonna be taking you guys through my entire maker space, talking about a lot of the tools and printers and devices and setups I have. But to catch you guys up, if you don't know, I uh, recently moved and I had a gap between my uh, housing situation. So I had to put all of my stuff into storage. And then once I got it out, I moved into this new place, which is awesome. I'm really, really liking it. But there was a pretty significant flood, ruined all the floors, had to tear all the floorboards up, dry out all of the subfloor, and get the new floors put down and get everything reset back up. So everything was kind of moved into the garage. And now it's back in here and I've kind of got into a place where I feel like I can work and where I wanted to share with you guys. So there's a lot that goes into having a good kind of maker space, a space where you feel good about making things, assembling things, taking things apart, unboxing stuff. So I've kind of got this set up in a way where I've got a nice little workstation. I've got my printers, a lot of hardware and storage. And and then I've got this table set up in front of me. So let's start here. I've got a motorized sit stand desk, but I'm using it as a little bit of kind of an assembly table, an unboxing table. So right now we obviously have a massive printer on it. And I realized quickly that doing stuff for a whole large size printer on a uh, small kind of workbench area, which with a really shallow desk wasn't working out very well. So I picked up this guy. I can raise it and lower it when I want to sit or when I want to stand. It's also nice for kind of having to do video stuff. So yeah, this should be nice and flexible. I can kind of tuck it away in a corner and get all the space back when I need. On the desk right now is this. This is the uh, TiVo Tornado. I unboxed this quite a while ago on the channel. And uh, yeah, it served me pretty well. I used it all throughout the pandemic in order to print PPE for um, a lot of the kind of necessary workers in my area. And during that time, it actually broke. I knew the power uh, supply went out on it. So I picked up a new one and I've been kind of putting it back together with a lot of improvements. We've got the um, Boron Stealth Burner on here and I've got the Voron M4, got a new bed on it, orbiter filament sensor. So I'm gonna be taking you guys through the whole process of updating this printer and getting it running again. I've recorded everything. So I'm trying to figure out if I wanna do it as kind of one large build log type video or break it down into individual parts. If you have a preference, let me know. But this has been really, really great for me to dive into the Voron kind of uh, ecosystem, get used to how they design uh, their parts and how they get put together. I eventually want to build a full on Voron. So yeah, this has just helped me kind of get started. Also put Clipper on this. This is the first uh, printer that I've had Clipper on. Also on here, you can see I've got a little overhead cam um, set up, which is nice for getting a top down view. I've got this little desk light. I'll show these off in detail with some B-roll a little bit later. We also have a lot of tools set up on here. All the tools I've basically been using for getting this printer almost pulled completely apart and put back together. So yeah, this is kind of gonna be where I'm gonna be putting together printers, taking stuff apart, modding stuff, anything that's kind of too big to do on the uh, little workbench behind me, that's what I will be using. The next section I'm gonna take you guys through is the workbench behind me, starting out with some of this really, really cool artwork that's up on the wall. That is all from Adam Savage. I'm sure most of you guys know who he is. Of course, he's got tested.com now, and he was a part of Mythbusters a long time ago, but he's kind of one of my um, maker influences. I, I have actually named one of my printers after him. And yeah, he's really, really gotten me into the idea of just getting enthralled and being enthusiastic about whatever you're into and sharing it with others. So it was a big influence of me starting my channel and how I continue to make it and how, what I'm planning on doing in the future. The workbench I have behind me is kind of designed around mostly doing electronics work, soldering, desoldering, um, testing circuits and doing, you know, Arduino circuits and some of the DIY sim racing stuff I do. Then I've also got an area where I do vinyl cutting and more assembly type stuff. So uh, the videos where I put together the Stealth Burner and the M4, I'll be doing a lot of the work over there. So yeah, I've just kind of put it together in a flow that goes kind of from 
this way to that way. Um, all the electronic stuff is done down here. I've got storage for a lot of my electronic components that I use on the daily. Um, things like heat shrink tube, uh, lots of connectors, crimping tools, uh, three, four, five core wire, a bunch of stuff like that. I've got some of my vinyl cutter stuff under that setup as well. I do have a little TV set up there with a the Chromecast so I can stream other creators while I'm working on stuff and watching a lot of uh, Nero 3D and Steve Builds. They're two of the biggest um, Boron oriented streamers and content creators right now. And they do lots of streams on creating all of the different uh, variations of Boron printers. So very informational, I've been learning a lot from those guys. Now, moving on to that side of the room, that is where I have my shelf where this printer will eventually go back on. And the other three of my main printers are over there as well. I've got two Ender 3s that I've been doing some modifications on and a CR10. And those have gone from stock, you know, basic uh, Creality printers and I've upgraded uh, a lot of stuff on them individually and probably gonna prop some of these uh, similar components on them as well. But for now they're printing really well and I've been using them to print a few parts for this guy. Above those, I've got a lot of filament storage up on the top shelf. I've got a couple dry boxes that I can keep some more hygroscopic filaments in like uh, carbon fiber and nylon and stuff. And also I've been printing a lot of TPU for grips for this uh, DIY steering wheels. I've got a lot of filament samples that I've gotten through all of the trade shows I've been to and conventions like uh, Murph and Earth and, and Maker's Fair. So I have tons of uh, little samples that I can use when I wanna try out a different color or print just like a little tchotchke for a friend in a specific color. I don't have to buy or keep an entire, you know, 15, 20, $25 spool of that color, I can just grab, you know, a sample, figure out what their favorite color, color is, print it out for them and send it away to them. On the bottom part of that shelf is where I keep a lot of little plastic shoebox size bins where I store different uh, 3D printing components. I've got a box for kinematics, a box for electronics, a box for Raspberry Pi stuff, a box just for fans. And then I have individual boxes just for uh, the individual printers. So the stock stuff that I pulled off that I kind of want to keep which honestly, I'm a little bit of a pack rack, so I kind of keep everything, but it's really nice when you have to, you know, you're putting something back together or trying to reset it back to stock to give to a friend and you still have those parts. That's really kind of nice to have. So got all that stuff down there and I kind of pull it out and, and put it back on. And then finally, the far section on that wall is a shelf with a lot of small parts and hardware. I'm trying to get my hardware situation uh, in a lot better shape. Um, I've got a lot of small little individual bins for, you know, M3 socket head, M3 flat heads, and you have to kind of sort through all those to find what you want, then open it up and hope you still have that screw in stock. So what I'm working towards is using some of these HDX little small parts organizers from Home Depot, and then I'm 3D printing a number of smaller components to kind of subdivide them even further. So I've already done my M5, M6, and M8 screws, and that's working out really well. So my socket cap head screws I have in one of these, and they're all nice and um, divided up. I know, you know, they're labeled and I can find the specific length of screw that I need really, really quickly. I wanna kind of do that for my M2, M3, M4 socket head screws, and then probably do variations for flat and uh, also button head. I'm not sure, I don't use flat and button head quite as much, so maybe I could just use one organizer and have like the M2 to M4 and divide it in half between uh, the two different types, but we'll see. I just wanna have one place where I can go and I know I can get this type of screw that I need uh, at that given moment. And rounding out that little area, I've got a number of boxes of a lot of things I plan on doing either to my current printers or specifically for video. So I have a lot of hot ends that I have bought that are kind of in the, I'd say medium to higher end scale. So like capping off at $100, some Fetus hot ends, uh, E3D hot ends, uh, I've got a, a Revo coming in. So I just wanna do some testing on those and kind of figure out what I want to you know, use on the bulk of my printers. I've been kind of lagging behind in terms of all the development that has been going on around hot ends. You know, fast 3D printing is really, really in right now. And you're always gonna be limited by the amount of flow that you're getting from your hot end, no matter how fast you're able to move that tool head around. If you can't, you know, extrude enough plastic, then you're not gonna be able to print very fast. So I wanna get caught up on that, see what all the new hotness is, kind of try out a whole bunch of different things and maybe explain to you guys 
why I ended up choosing the one I wanted and give you guys some information to, you know, maybe make your next hot in uh, upgrade. I have a couple of printers down there as well. One is just a like $60 open box box of parts that I picked up as is from eBay. And the goal of that is to eventually build a ender wire kind of uh, Voron switch wire conversion. Um, a couple guys have done that online and basically you have to buy some linear rails, get the components that you need for your tool head and extruder. And eventually it will become a Core ZX printer, which is something I didn't even know existed until a little while ago. But if you think about a Core XY, you've got two motors that are shared to move the tool head around in the XY and then a bed that either goes you know, up or down or sometimes they have the uh, gantry rise on like a Boron 2.4. But with a Core ZX, you actually have two belted motors for the Z and the X. So you have the kind of ZX plane is controlled by two individual motors. And then the Y is still um, a single motor that moves back and forth, but you've got the linear rails, which create a nice, nice platform as opposed to the roller type platforms, which are, I think, good enough for entry level printers. But when you want to get into kind of tighter tolerances, faster printing, um, just kind of higher end printing, I think linear rails are where the industry is starting to go. Linear rods and linear bearings are still pretty good. We see those on the Mark IV, and I think the newer Sobel printers are still using those, but I kind of want to move up and out and just try to get into some faster, kind of cooler 3D printing. The other printer is honestly another kind of just splurge buy. It's a essentially an Ender 3 Pro or Ender 3 V2 or S1, I'm not really sure, but it's from Monoprice, which is kind of cool because it's bringing things full circle. The first printer I bought was a Monoprice Maker Select Plus, and it was the first 3D printer video I put out on the channel. So I saw it, thought it would be possibly something that I could either do a live stream unboxing of and doing the first setup and first impressions and first prints, or maybe I'll just do a similar style video as I did for that video way, way back, like six years ago. It's kind of crazy to think I've been doing 3D printing content and uh, making stuff for six years on YouTube. So um, hopefully you guys are feeling a little bit caught up on what I have going on. We're gonna be doing a whole series of videos on getting this guy printing again and doing a lot of upgrades. Um, I've got a lot of projects with sim racing that are kind of ongoing. I you know, make a lot of sim racing wheels. So I have those in various states of completion and wanna just kind of get as many as possible of them done and hopefully create some content around that. I do have some stuff in storage still that I need to bring into here. Um, there is a box for a um, laser engraver that I really, really wanna start getting into and a box for a desktop CNC mill that I wanna have set up, both of those set up in the garage. So we'll see how I can also maybe start to take some of the content creation out there and do some cool stuff that is a little bit too, um, messy or dirty to be having uh going on inside of my side room but that is it hopefully you guys feel you know pretty caught up with what i have going on i'm excited to be creating content again um i i'm just getting back into things so my lighting setup probably isn't all the greatest my audio isn't all the greatest so hopefully you guys can forgive me for that and i will improve as i go taking any you know youtube adsense the little bit that i get and putting it back into the channel to improve some things so Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.